What's going on, everyone? So one of the best things that the Lakers did this offseason, besides add all the depth and versatility and shooting and whatnot, they really well-rounded this roster. But keeping the core players was so vital and so important, especially for continuity reasons, right? Keeping Austin Reeves, DeAndre Russell, Rui Hachimura, Jared Vanderbilt. And Jared Vanderbilt was one of the biggest no-brainers, right? $4.5 million option. You're not going to pass that up, especially with the production on the defensive end. I mean, the guy is elite, elite. I mean, there's a real argument that he is uh, the best defensive uh, on-ball defender in the entire league. Uh, the numbers, the eye test, go look up what he's done to some of the top guys in the league. The guy is A1 without a doubt. And he is going to be eligible for a contract extension and very likely will get one going into uh, training camp, right? The Lakers want to get everyone locked up, everyone secured long-term, right? We saw the Anthony Davis, no BS, no nonsense. Here you go, straightforward, right? They got everybody locked up long-term. That way they have their roster for the foreseeable future, and then they can kind of just tweak and do whatever they need around that. Jared Vanderbilt is going to be a huge piece for the foreseeable future. His age, his youth, everything really means that he could be a staple for this Lakers team for hopefully his entire career, right? And the idea is hopefully he continues to improve on the offensive end. The defense is there. Can he just get the offense? And it's best for the Lakers to get him that extension immediately because then you don't have to worry about that price skyrocketing, right? Like, because right now you can pay him based on his value and, you know, give him a marginal, like, hey, this is where we believe you'll be type thing, or maybe even have like milestones he can reach or whatever uh, to get bonuses and stuff. But he's probably going to be a lot cheaper now than he would be, say, next offseason when you're trying to get him to sign a new contract or something like that. You have people trying to go after him and get him, right? You're still going to have to pay for him. But here's the thing. If Jared Vanderbilt ends up shooting 38% from three, then he's probably going to go from you know, 12, 15 million to probably 18, 20 million in today's market, the way people are just handing out contracts. And a team would absolutely throw extra money at him just to take him away from the Lakers. So if you can get him locked up now, then very likely over time during that contract, he's actually going to be underpaid just like in Austin Reeves. And that is ideal. But one of the things that I've talked about heavily is like Ruby Hachimura, right? Right. Like, I absolutely believe Rui Hachimura is a guy that could go and get you 20 on any given night. I think if he's given the proper role and proper opportunity with this Lakers team, he, he could be six man of the year. Because I do think he comes off the bench. I think they will start Jared Vanderbilt, keep that continuity of the starting unit from last year, and, you know, allow that to carry over this year. Uh, plus, with like an Austin Reeves, D'Lo, LeBron at his age, and Anthony Davis, you could really use Jared Vanderbilt's versatility and his ability as a point of attack defender, guarding the best defense, uh, best offensive player every night on the other team, right? That makes a world of sense. But Jared Vanderbilt, he's not going to get the opportunity that you could with Rui, right? Because even if Jared Vanderbilt, let's say he makes huge strides offensively, He's not going to be a guy that you can rely on to just go and cook and get buckets, right? Like, he's going to be a 3 and D guy, a guy that is more spot up in the corner. And if he can continue to improve that, I mean, he like doubled his um, his three-point percentage last year. I, I don't expect that because then he'd be like 60% from three. But could he get to like 37, 38%, right? Could Jared Vanderbilt have that sort of breakout year this year for the Lakers, right? We've talked about Jared Vanderbilt on this channel a lot, Rui a lot too, because they're the two guys that I'm really excited to see. Obviously, I'm excited to see Torian Prince's impact, Cam Reddish, I'm super high on, I've talked a lot about him, but they're the guys we've already seen in the in a role with the Lakers, already in purple and gold. We have an idea and vision of what to expect from them, and I'm excited to see how that growth translates this upcoming season. Because he did regress with us 
compared to the Utah Jazz, right? His corner three uh, with Utah was like around 37% with us. It was around 32%. Um, but I'm hoping he could get back to like 37, 38% from that corner three because that's been the biggest thing. And he's been working like a madman all offseason. The second the Lakers picked up his option, which was like immediately, he there was already images and videos of stuff of him in the Lakers facility working on that corner three-point shot. He was working with Phil Handy, who we've seen what he can do with players. And Jared Vanderbilt was in Japan working on his game with Rui Hachimura, which I love seeing them kind of working together. Uh, two are very likely going to be our small forward and power forward of the foreseeable future, right? Like, very likely. Even if the Lakers do post-LeBron go get another star, right? Rui is very likely going to start because more likely than not, it's probably going to be a shooting guard, small forward. Uh, but Jared Vanderbilt, you know, if we get, you know, a point guard, like if it is, I just use, I'm just using this as an example. I don't even want this guy, but I could see the Lakers getting him. Let's say the Lakers get Trey Young, right? Then very likely our starting five would be Trey Young, Austin Reeves, Jared Vanderbilt, Rui Hachimura, Anthony Davis, right? Jared Vanderbilt and Rui Hachimura are very likely going to be fixtures in our starting unit for a long time. Um, of course, again, once LeBron leaves, but Jared Vanderbilt will be right away. So we need him to continue to improve. We need him to continue to grow. We need him to continue to be more reliable as time goes on, right? He's he's on a roster where he has so many playmakers. He's going to get so many open looks and so many opportunities. And we've seen when he's on, he's off. It's the consistency, right? One night he's four or six from three. And then the next three games, he's like two of six or you no know, one of six. And it's like, we need him to consistently night in and night out, be able to develop that shot. If he does become like a 37% three point shooter, or a 38% three-point shooter, he might end up being like one of, if not the best, three and D wings in the entire league. The guy is, I mean, he again, he's already arguably the best defensive player or on-ball defender in the league, right? And you add in a reliable three-point shot, there's not very many, if any, that would be better than Jared Vanderbilt. And, and in that type of role, right? That three and D style role, right? And so I'm hoping and rooting for Jared Vanderbilt to do that. Another thing I really want to see Jared Vanderbilt continue to improve and work on is his hands, right? Now, he's great at once he gets to the basket, finishing. He sh he finishes at the rim at about 76%. Um, and that even dropped with the Lakers, though, right? He was around like 66%, 65% at finishing uh, at the rim with us, which is a problem. And this is something I've talked about heavily, right? Like, you know, you, you, how many times did Jared Vanderbilt make a beautiful cut, get, get the dump off pass, right? And just either fumble it, not secure it, go up, hit the rim or whatever, or just turn the ball over. Like that's a problem, right? He needs to do that. Now, how much of that was just lack of chemistry? Because you got to remember, these guys were thrown in to the fire, like literal, like the house is burning down type fire, and they had to go and put it out, and they did. I mean, they got to the Western Conference Finals. would have been nice to win an NBA championship, but still got to the Western Conference Finals for a team that started 2-10, and 10, and a team that didn't even play eight games together fully healthy going into the playoffs, right? And they were able to, to you know, stretch that storm get through it, and then they ended up meeting the inevitable NBA champions, right? But Jared Vanderbilt, if he can just catch the ball and finish at the rim back to that, like, 76%, so now you have him 76% from, you know, inside the painted area, and then you have him 37 38% from three, like, now you have a real offensive threat. Because one, they can't leave him open. He's quick, he's long, he's lengthy, right? Whether he's grown a couple inches or not, I know a lot of people are on the fence about that. Whether it's true or not, he's still very long, very lengthy, very quick. He's a guy because he is standing in the corner as a spot-up shooter. 
he ends up being an afterthought, and you see like the defense sag off of him, and then they end up forgetting about him, and boom, he is cut into the rim, and then you get that nice pass from LeBron or Reeves or D'Lo or whomever, and if he can just catch that ball and finish, I mean, he's a guy that could average double digits easily. Easily, because again, he's going to be an afterthought. He's going to get a lot of wide open threes. So if he can knock down two or three of those a game and just get to the rim, I mean, Jared Vanderbilt could be a real problem for other teams. A real problem. Because there's just, there's too many things that teams have to worry about. You have to worry about Anthony Davis. You double team AD, right? If he, Especially if he's killing you. And then you got LeBron James. You got to always keep an eye on LeBron James. D'Lo is a legit three-level scorer. Like, he can put the ball in the hoop. Rui, guy to put the ball in the hoop. You got to watch him, right? You got Austin Reeves, right? Like, that guy, if he continues the way that he's going and the way he's looking, good luck. Like, all of a sudden, you start looking around. It's like, Lakers have four, five, six guys that, you know, could give you a 20 on any given night. You know, and... So what do you do? You leave Jared Vanderbilt. We got a we got a double team AD. We got to always keep somebody on LeBron. We always got to keep somebody on Austin Reeves, right? And then you have one guy to deal with D'Lo and Vando. Well, D'Lo, if he gets back to the guy that he was last year, shot forty two percent from three. So what would you rather have? The guy that can shoot thirty seven percent from three and Jared Vanderbilt? or the 42% three-point shooter in D'Lo. They're probably going to leave Jared Vanderbilt wide open. Or even if they do kind of have, like if they play a zone or whatever, again, he's going to get wide open looks, he's going to get wide open shots. Or he could cut and kind of just flash and really cause problems. Because if you can give him the ball and allow him to go make plays and allow him to, to go to work, like that would be massive. It's another reason I want him to work on his hands. We've seen... All of the raw tools, right? We've seen him be able to grab a rebound and go coast to coast. We've seen him be able to, to make plays and, and really kind of like, you know, set other guys up. We've seen him be able to, you know, be in the dunker spot and just catch lobs and, and hammer them home, right? We've seen him be able to, to knock down some corner threes and just threes throughout, right? Like, we've seen him show flashes of a little bit of everything. And if he can just continue to to develop and just be consistent, I really think he might be a problem this year. Seriously. I really think he might be a problem. He's only 24 years old. So he still has a lot of room to grow. Like, the Lakers, he could develop. He still has three years before he's even entering his prime, right? Prime is usually around, like, you know, 27, 28 years old. Um, you know, very few people are like LeBron where, you know, his prime is, like, coming in the league and it's 21 years. Most guys, they really, they become the player that they are, like, fully. Usually around 27 is usually when you see it. That's when most people, it's like, okay, well, you know, he's in his prime. So using that as, like, the age template, you have three years before he even enters that, right? So he's nowhere near a finished product. But if he can just become that reliable threat, I mean, how do you stop the Lakers? Because if he's 37% from three, the only thing you could do is leave him open and pray that he has a bad night, right? And... You know, everyone has bad shooting nights. There some there will be games where that works, right? But if he can just be, you know, 37% from three and consistent, then more games than not, that's not going to work, and you're just going to get torched. And you're going to look up, and you're going to be down 20, right? Like, that's the goal. That's the hope. I Like, I, I really think Jared Vanderbilt is one of those guys that you should put on the list as as a breakout guy. I don't think he has the breakout potential of like a, of like, you know, a um, Rui Hachimura or even like a Max Christie or something like that, right? Like when I say him breaking out, I don't mean him going and all of a sudden becoming a, a 25 and 5 guy and the best defensive player in the league. Like I, I don't think it's going to be something like that. 
But breaking out, like I could see him. Could he be a uh, twelve and you know twelve six and two guy and the best defensive guy in the league? All right? Can he be a double digits in points? If that can happen, then now you're talking. Now you're now you're cooking with fire, right? Now he becomes a real problem, and it's it would just be the consistency. That's that's the one thing that is kind of holding him back to an extent. Because I mean, last year for the Lakers, he averaged eight points per game, right? He averaged or seven points per game, seven point two, um, to be exact. So he was a seven and seven guy with two assists and one and a half steals, right? But he was seventy eight percent from the free throw line, which isn't terrible. Right, but I'd like that in the 80s if possible. He was 60% uh, in two point shots, um, in which he shot four attempts per game, and he was 30% on one and a half three point attempts per game. Right, that's again not great. If he can get those numbers up, then watch out. Lakers are going to be tough to put it lightly, but. Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question. You let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think uh, Vando could definitely have a sort of breakout year? Do you think he's going to be a huge factor? Do you think he's not? How do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments.